What do you get if you cross a floppy disk with a sheet of metal? Not Robocop, something even more exciting. What you actually get is this this cyborg floppy disk, Robo floppy. So yeah, I was not planning to make a video on this. Uh, the two things that I'm doing at the minute, um, messing about with some hard drive compression and also try to fix up an old gateway machine that was supposed to be the next videos, but they're being a little bit problematic, let's just say that. So I decided to do this in the meantime. Quick little video because I thought it was quite a cool little thing. So this is my flash path, the one that I got off eBay for cheap, that uh, once I realised it needed a drive, I never got around to seeking it out until the other day. And it is quite a, a cool little thing. I've just got my box and my flash path inside. But back in the day, if you bought it new, you would have also got a little driver disc like this. So we've got a little one on CD-ROM here. And I think they also came with a floppy version as well. The primary use for these things was in digital photography, so when you go looking for info on the net about them, you tend to find it on sites like this, Digital Camera, where they are talking about it coming out, and they are talking about things like the data transfer rate when you plug your primitive early digital camera into your laptop or whatever. It takes ages to get your photographs across and onto the PC. So one possible solution to increase that data transfer rate is to buy a flash path. And then you can just take the card straight out of your camera, stick it into the flash path, and then stick the flash path into your floppy and you'll get your photos onto your computer much faster. From a retro computing perspective, I don't know if this thing's got any practical value. It's a curious little thing. It'll be fun to look at. I guess it kind of falls into the same categories, things like zip drives, which, you know, they can be handy to transfer stuff around. But for the most part, you're going to be using USB or other solutions for getting stuff onto your old machines. Here it is in all of its shiny metal clad glory with the Flashpath logo written boldly across the front. If you flip it over, you can see where the memory card goes in at the bottom right. It gives you the orientation there. And then, yeah, this, this floppy disk takes batteries, battery powered floppy disk. So, yeah, oop, off onto the floor, that one goes. So it's two CR 2016 batteries it takes to power the flash memory. It came with an 8 meg card, so you can see it runs on 3 volts. You can see the orientation there. But they got bigger than that, so we're going to be using a 128 megabyte card. So yeah, a floppy disk that can take 128 megabytes of stuff. Yeah, in it goes. Nice and snug. So I'm going to be using a Pentium 2, my Dell Pentium 2 300 Voodoo 2 machine. So let's pop it in the drive and see what we've got. So when I first got this, I didn't actually realise there were any drivers required and just stuck it in and nothing happened and then I didn't bother doing any more research, so it's kind of lazy. So when you put the thing into the drive and go in and try and browse to it, it does essentially nothing. It knows there's something in the drive physically, it tries to read it, it fails and then it tells you that drive A is not accessible. Getting drivers for the flash path is pretty straightforward, probably mostly because of the digital photography connection so a lot of the camera manufacturers who are all still around today have still got stuff online i got these ones from the rico website the camera manufacturer and their version three point something i think they were the last last ones maybe and um, so this installers for windows 95 and windows 98 there is a couple of other versions which i'll have a look at shortly and yeah so basically you load it up it in installs the driver, just takes a second. And then once you've loaded it up, if you go into your program files and have a look and see what you've got, you get a couple of little utilities. After a quick reboot required by the driver install, we can take our flash path, which has got our 128 megabyte smart media card in it, and we can stick it into the drive. And then if we go and have a look in our program files, what the the um, driver install has done is it's created a couple of little tools. So we've got a, a formatter. So obviously your normal FAT formatting isn't going to work with this thing. So you need to use a special formatter. There's also a status tool there. So you can sort of see what's going on with the card, whether the batteries are running out or whatever. So once you've done that, you double click on the 
floppy drive icon and you wait and you wait and why do you have to wait because it isn't a 1.44 megabyte one anymore it's a whopping big 128 meg thing it's got to read and there you go you've got 128 megabytes of stuff that you can now put on this thing that is damned amazing and then we can go in and verify it so you can see it's just under 128 megs actually 124 but near enough so yeah We've got one large floppy drive so these things came out kind of in the late 90s uh, the 128 megabyte card didn't even come out till i think it was 2000 or 2001 so it's kind of late to the show because everybody's using usb by then um so not really a practical thing for pc users which is why it was mostly used by digital photographers imagine if you could have had something like this a few years earlier it would have been awesome So this is the status application that got installed, so you can run it from your programs, or it also loads a little SysTray icon that you can launch it from. Uh, it doesn't really do much, it tells you if the drive's in, if both your batteries have charge, that's basically it. So it goes red if there's any kind of read issues or anything like that. And this is what the format utility looks like as we quickly run through the format, it just takes a sec, and bang, ready to read and write. Now, I've been wanting to do a thing about early digital photography for a while. I keep on buying cheap cameras when I see them on eBay. And I thought I did have an Olympus, and indeed I do. So, yep, this is a camera that supports the smart media card. So we could use this to try and take some snaps and see how it looks. The Olympus came with its own Olympus branded 4 megabyte smart media card. So I'm just going to use that. So I've taken a, a picture on the camera and we're going to put that in and see how it goes at this point i had a problem because when i put the put the card in uh I, the status monitor started doing its job and telling me that uh, i had a problem so i got a red traffic light and i never figured out what it was i took the batteries out gave them all a good wipe and everything and whatever i did seemed to sort the problem out so i don't know it might just been a bit of corrosion or something or a bit of mess on the connectors for the batteries or something like that i'm not sure so I've taken the picture, I've gotten over the issue of it not reading correctly, and now we take the 4 meg card out and put it into the flash path, pop the flash path in, and then we can go to our A drive and see what we've got. And we've got, yes, we've got a folder, and inside that folder is a photograph of the necks of my guitars, hopefully. Yes, there you go. So yeah, it all works nicely. Uh, as all of those photographic magazine reviews said, so that's pretty cool. So, also on the Rico website was some Windows XP drivers. So I pulled out my IBM, my soon-to-be retro room server with all my drivers and game backups and things on. Uh, I need to finish doing up this machine. There will be a video forthcoming, um, but we, this has got Windows XP on it already. So we're going to see if we can install the drivers of the Rico site onto Windows XP and see if the flash path works there. To begin with, just out of curiosity, I had to try to install the Windows 95 98 driver on Windows XP in compatibility mode. I just wandered. It didn't work, needless to say. So we'll load up the XP one and we can see it as a much more shiny and modern installer. Okay, we're back in. Sorry about the quality of this screenshot. It's gone a bit sort of wobbly for some reason. Okay, so if we go into our status sys tray icon. It gives us our version number. There's another option there that just says drive A, but doesn't seem to do anything. So it doesn't seem to work quite the same way as it did in the other version. And if you go and look in program files, we don't have the two options anymore. We've only got a single option, which is the format option. So we can't launch that status application in any way by the looks of it okay i've loaded the thingy me jig with the four meg card so the flash path now has the card from the camera so we should be able to hopefully see that photograph that we took with the camera and check that you can transfer stuff from the windows 98 version to the windows xp version and there it is so all working nicely so it's nice this thing works basically from windows 95 upwards so far 
Okay, one more machine. Uh, I've got my Pentium 90 out here because there are a couple of places I saw when I was searching around for information on this thing that claim that it works with Windows 3. So I've actually found a driver that claims to work with Windows 3 and I'm going to set up a box to do just that. So this thing has DOS on it at the minute, but yeah, look at that. A big stack of floppies need to be installed to test that single floppy. So it's like the uh, traditional and the the solid state side by side. So I have to install Windows 3.1 on this machine. Here we are, after much floppy disk installing, we have Windows 3.11 on DOS 6.0. We've got the driver on a floppy disk and we're ready to click on it and see what happens. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> it flashed, it went black and it came back and nothing happened. So unfortunately it seems that it doesn't work on Windows 3.11 with the drivers that I could find. There was another thread that I found that was interesting and I may seek out more information on this at some point where somebody had hacked the Linux version of the FlashPath driver to work with DOS. Now that would be superb because it's really with these older machines where having a floppy drive that you can put 128 megs of stuff on would be super useful and super handy. So if I could find that, that would be awesome, but I'm not going to hold my breath. It's such a shame because this is the kind of machine where this thing would have been really really useful not so much with the windows machines but there we go so it's, it was an interesting little journey finding all this information out and it's an interesting little thing i might even use it you know it's super handy um i might even use it and just put a bunch of basic stuff on that i use to swap between things frequently and on windows 98 and 95 and xp i guess so there we have it it it's an interesting little thing. Um, I'm glad I've got it. There, there's plenty of them on eBay and they're quite cheap. So it's a fun little thing to mess around with. And you know, I can see myself maybe using it occasionally. I'll keep it out. And you know, if, if I've got two machines that I want to quickly copy something over with that, you know, I might just use it for the fun of it, for the hell of it, just to make a change from USB. So anyway, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this little look at the flash path and hopefully we'll get back to some more interesting stuff than what the original videos that I was working on. So I hope you'll join me for those. Thank you for watching. Bye.